Denise C. Herndon Harvey is a speaker, transformation coach and published author, known for her writings on love, faith in God and family restoration. She is the author of Growing Up Santa Fras, Where Is My Daddy? and her latest book, Emergence of Me, Discovering My Identity and Courage Within. And Denise is with us here just now. How are you today? I'm very well. Thank you very much for asking. So what inspired you to write this? book, Emergence of Me. Emergence of Me literally was birthed years ago. And it happened after I had suffered an illness and I ended in ICU. And then I sat on the book. I sat on the book for a lot of years. And instead of writing that book, I instead wrote my children's book. And it was just me having to get the courage to desire and have that have that want to put myself out there. I was afraid. I was afraid to put myself out there. I wanted to be authentic. I wanted to be true. I didn't want it to be a lot of fluff. I didn't want to be any fluff. I wanted to be exactly where I was and what I was thinking, what I was feeling, and then reflect back on my childhood as well. And the title of the book is Emergence of Me. So that kind of suggests that you were putting yourself out there and emerging. Yeah. It's 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 basically this is what you need to do. You know? So if you're gonna title it this way, I think this is what needs to happen. And at that point years ago I wasn't ready for that to happen, but I knew that was the title that needed to take place. I needed that it needed you were searching to find your place in the world. Yeah. So how did that journey of self-discovery shape your identity and courage? For me, and especially after I had gotten sick, it was a lot of me reflecting back, trying to um, understand why I think the way I think, why I believe the way I believe, why I react the way I do in certain situations. You know, what you know, what has formed me to be so timid as a child and be so insecure, you know, and yeah. then to be a believer as well. I literally was walking through life doing what I knew I needed to do, doing what I believe um, were all purpose to do. But yet I was so unfulfilled and so unsatisfied. That right there is what really made me start looking back and reflecting back like and asking the question, God, yeah. there's got to be more. There's got to be more than just going to a nine to five job that I don't even like. Yeah. But I need a paycheck, just like a whole lot of people do in this world. We do what we have to do in order to take care of our family, to take care of our needs and our responsibilities. But how happy are we in it? How happy are we doing those things that we're stepping out, spending the majority of our hours each day doing? The book emphasises the importance of speaking to your own heart and believing in yourself. Do you think that was an important message to include? I think it is an important message to include because right now the world dictates what you what you what you should think, yeah. speak, um, how to treat other people, how not to treat them. Um, and I think we have to know who we truly are and who we truly have been created from. If that's our belief, and that is wholeheartedly my belief, and and stick with that and search and ask those questions. Lord, who am I? What am I supposed to be doing with the time that I have left on this world that you put me here for? Because I don't think I'm there yet, but I could be there, but I didn't even know to ask those questions. Like when I was young, I didn't even know to search like that. I didn't know to ask those questions. Yeah. I didn't know to start from that point, from the creator's point to find, to figure that out. So how do you encourage others to be able to ask those questions themselves? You know, I think when you're speaking to other people, I really do believe that you have to be at a point to where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. It's either change, figure it out, or remain the same. You know, who wants to, if you are unhappy, if you're um, not content, if, you, if you're if you not satisfied, do you want to, do you really want to stay that way? Or do you want to try to figure out what can satisfy me? What can make me happy? What purpose is there that I can be a blessing to other people that needs? You know, there's something in me that I can do for someone else. But you have to be honest and truthful with yourself and you have to be ready to do the work. Yeah. And what advice would you give yourself if you were to go back maybe to where this journey began? To know that I am enough. To also know that you do need to seek, but to not be so afraid and especially afraid of the opinions of others. You know, a lot of time we spend so much time worrying about what someone else is going to think about us, say about us. That does not even matter. But we spend so much time and energy invested. Oh my gosh, I got to have this image. I got to make sure this is perfect. I got to make sure I do this and I don't want to say the wrong thing. And we're not really being true to ourselves and true to who God created us to be. Did you always 
have a calling to be an author or was it just when you had these experiences that it came about? You know what? As a child, oh my gosh, I love to read. Yeah. I literally took myself as a child to the local library, didn't even understand about taking out books. I might, you know, my parents didn't do that for me. I literally wanted to take these books out. And she's like, young lady, where's your mother? She's at home. So I literally had to take that little application back home, have them fill them out in order for me to be able to take out books. So that's all I ever did was read books. You didn't see me without having a book in my purse, my hand somewhere. And that's where my enjoyment came. And I also, and I often wonder what it would be like to write my own book. But yeah. then I thought, well, you know what? People like me, we probably don't do that. And, you know, I'm older. So of course I was young thinking those thoughts. So as I got older, I really did desire to write. And even like with Emergence, I started that book so long ago, I had the title and I had all the chapters. And the only chapter that I started writing was chapter one. And once I wrote chapter one and knew I had to be authentically honest, you know, I had, well, I had my husband read it and he thought, um, well, Denise, your mother might not be too happy with what you're saying here. You might mm -hmm. hurt her feelings. And I said, you know what? My intention is not to hurt anyone's feelings, but this is my truth. And that's what I'm trying to get out there. So he was being honest with me and he was being sweet with me and, you know, trying to be like gently say it, you know, but when he said that, it actually made me revert back. Like, well, you know what? Just forget it. You know, yeah. it, it maybe it's not even worth it. It made me if I do finish writing it, I'll just keep it for myself. I won't yeah. share it with the world. You know, I'll just I'll just keep it hidden. Yeah. And when you say my truth, what does that mean? Yeah. Is that the truth or is it like your side of the story? When I say my truth, I'm talking about my understanding of who I am and who I believe in and what I believe and how I go out serving the world in that, not with someone else's putting on me. Well, you yeah. know, you should do this and you know, you should work here and you know, you're good at this and that's what you should do. No, what has God called and created me to do? And that's what I'm going to walk in. And do you think it's maybe important to maybe not fear too much about people's reactions to what you're going to write because you want it to be the whole truth? and nothing but the truth. Yeah, because if you do fear, then what's the point? You're just, you know, what's the point of putting it out there if it's not even what you really believe? Yeah. You're just kind of going along with the masses because this is what we think people want to hear. Not what you have to say, but yeah. just what we think everyone's going to be okay with. And that's kind of not, that's why I'm saying when it was my story, only I know that, you yeah. know, no one else can tell you what your heart says, what your mind says, you know, what you're speaking to yourself. No one else can do that but you. So have you got any future writing projects or endeavors that you've got in mind? I do. I do. I actually just finished a collab book with 11 other authors. Mm. It is international because there's authors from South Africa, from the Philippines, and then across the United States. And that book, um, Unspoken, uh, what is it? Unspoken Voices, it actually launches this Friday. Ooh. So we have a big launch. Yeah. And that was <laughs> such a wonderful uh, project. My chapter in that book is called Pivot in the Pause. Meaning the pauses in our life, those changes that happen, the good and the bad changes, the things that we don't want to face, the thing, you know, it comes to a point in our life where we have to make a decision, like I was saying earlier, to remain the same or to take a pivot, you know, and make that change. So that's my chapter in the book. Well, in the meantime, where can we find this book, Emergence of Me, Discovering My Identity and Courage Within? You can find it on Amazon, but you can also find it on my website, which is deniseharvey.com. And the new book will be there too. Well, many thanks for talking to us today. It's been great having you here. Thank you so much. It's been great being with you as well.